Take three. <laughs> We're not even matching audio. <laughs> Emily and Jordan from the future. We were just editing this video and realized we didn't film an intro. So here is the intro now. We are going to be making pot roast in this video. Super easy to make. Um, it just takes a lot of time is all, but the payoff is... So worth it. So worth it. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi friends. So these are all of the ingredients you'll need. Uh, you should be able to find them at any grocery store you have lying around and you might even have some already in your pantry but these are all really basic affordable ingredients that you can just throw in a crock pot let it sit for the whole day while you're at work or working from home and in the end it'll be really delicious So now we're gonna chop our vegetables. We're gonna leave the potatoes out because we're actually going to air fry them. So they're gonna be nice and crispy and we can put the pot roast on top. I keep the skins on, especially when like heating up carrots or like putting them in the slow cooker or anything like that. We're just gonna cut them. We're doing a rough chop because they're gonna get really soft in the slow cooker. So I'm just cutting off like the butts and stuff. Now I'm just gonna really cut them into thirds and keep them kind of chunky. I'm gonna cut this one in half. So, just like that. And then you can throw them right into the slow cooker. Now, we said three carrots, but honestly, you can put as many carrots as you like. I love carrots, so let's see how much this ends up being. That's good. Now, we're gonna do the celery. We're not gonna use the whole thing, because again, it has to fit in the pot. And these, we are also just gonna do a rough chop. I'm gonna chop off the bottoms. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Just about that. And keep the leaves in there because the leaves add flavor. Now we have our onion, this is a big one. I think I'm only gonna use half. If you have the room, by all means, put more vegetables in. But for us, this is as much room as we have. So this is gonna be another rough chop. I'm gonna keep the pieces pretty big. And then this all goes in. We'll break it up a little bit. So I just threw in four cloves of garlic. Okay, so now time to make the sauce. Uh, to make the sauce, we're gonna start off with some flour. So we're starting with about a quarter cup of flour. We're gonna add to that a cup and a half of beef broth uh, because I forgot to get it. We're using chicken stock. That looks about right. And then some Worcestershire sauce. The measurement for this is about two tablespoons if you like to do that. And last is the red wine. Cut to me opening the bottle. Whenever I'm opening a bottle of wine, I like to ask myself, why not? Nice. And about half a cup, right? Mm -hmm. About half a cup of red wine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now to whisk it lightly together. Uh -oh. Oh! We preheated the pan, getting it pretty smoking hot. Now we're gonna sear the meat so that the slow cooker is not all just mush. We pre-seasoned the meat um, a couple hours ago just to kind of get the salt and pepper in there to start seasoning it and bring out some of the moisture before we sear it. So without further ado, let's go. I'm gonna lay away from me. That's a nice sound. Uh, so I chose to use a cast iron pan because we have one lying around. Uh, but you can use any type of pan. All we're really trying to do is get some browning on the meat before we put it into the slow cooker. Now we're just placing the sizzling meat on top of our bed of veggies. Perfect fit! So now the meat and everything is in the slow cooker. We have it on low and it's going to stay for about seven to eight hours. It is almost 11 o'clock right now. So we will come back at six and see how everything turns out. 
So it is 519, which means that we are taking this, this bad boy out in almost an hour. It smells literally so good. Like I keep putting my nose up to this hole <laughs> and smelling it because it just smells so, so good. Um, Jordan currently is working on our closet and building some shelves in there, um, which is for another video. Anyway, I came on to say that there has been a change of plans. Instead of doing roasted potatoes in the air fryer, we are going to do pur pureed potatoes. So not really mashed potatoes. Well, actually, yes, mashed potatoes, but just like even more so, like more cream and butter. So my potatoes are boiling. I'm about to take them out. I'm letting them get a little more soft than I usually would if I was making mashed potatoes. So they are almost done, just boiling there. So you will need butter. I'm probably gonna use all this butter, to be quite honest. Two cloves of garlic. Um, I minced them up really well, um, but then we have milk as well. I'm gonna use, I think, like a cup of milk, possibly. Again, everything's gonna be eyeballed. Um, and then we have half and half. I'm gonna keep some water, uh, probably like half this cup. We like to keep some, uh, it's kind of the same like reasoning as why you keep pasta water for your sauce and stuff. It just like kind of helps bind everything together. So right now I'm just melting some butter in the saucepan. I'm gonna throw in my garlic as well. Also, some people use like a ricer, like that thing that you can like crush potatoes in to make it extra, extra smooth. I do not have that equipment, so I'm just gonna mash it regularly as we would like mashed potatoes and then use a hand mixer and whip it up so it's gonna be like whipped potatoes. I'm expecting some pretty good things from this dish. So my potatoes are fork tender. And now we're just gonna mash them. Oh mama. I'm gonna add my milk now. At this point I'm kind of just making regular mashed potatoes. So that was a lot of milk there because I wanna make these really, really creamy so I can start whipping them up. For the heavy cream, that much? Who knows? We'll put it in a little more later. And then now we're going to whip it up. Put it on a low speed for now. And whip her up. So I guess I can't really call this pureed potatoes because it's not really pureed potatoes. It's just mashed potatoes with an extra step. <laughs> That's about it. And then you want to season to taste. So I just put salt and pepper in last. And yeah, that's about it. Oh, lots of steam. Oh, it smells so good though. Okay, so we are gonna take everything out essentially, but then use like all the juices and stuff to make a really good sauce. So I'm gonna take out everything that's in here. You can essentially eat everything in here, uh, including like the onions and everything, except for the bay leaves. You do not want to eat the bay leaves, but all these carrots and celery we will have on the side with our potatoes. And then when I'm done fishing everything out, you're just gonna cover your pan with aluminum. Nice. So this is all the juice and all the drippings from the uh, eight hours. So now you're just gonna keep your pan maybe on medium and then just reduce this down essentially. You can add more like spices if you want. Look at how gorgeous these potatoes are. They are so whipped. Oh my god. Here's our sauce. It has reduced so much. It's still a bit liquidy to be honest, but you know, like I'm really hungry so I could not give two poops. Cut to the finished product. We have our wine. Chin chin. Okay, so this is the first time either of us have ever made this, so we are going to try it out. Ooh, it does fall apart a little bit yeah. though. Mmm, it's good. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's really good. Really, mm -hmm. really, really good. So, try to make this at home. Mmm, love it. Oh wait, the vegetables are so good. The potatoes are so good. Yum. It was extremely easy to make, decently affordable for like how much food you get out of it because there's still half the pot roast left. Great social distancing food. If you want to see more cooking videos like this, like, subscribe, and comment down below which food you want us to make next. Ciao.